Just briefly, want to, I want to support this um, bill. I have no difficulty and no hesitation. And when, when the Minister refers to that it's uh, simply a technical amendment to the 2007 Act with the sole purpose of extending by two years the transitional period and so on, Yes, it is a technical amendment, but what this, the necessity for this amendment is certainly not technical in the lives of the people affected. And like everybody here and, and, and most people in Ireland that watch the programme on Aris Attractor, we were rendered speechless, really. And it's not a good position for a legislator to be in, to be rendered speechless in relation to this matter. And in a previous life, I had a vast experience, a privilege really at the redress board in relation to a number of institutions. And of course, it's an offense to talk about the details of that. But let me talk on the general terms, in terms of an organization in Galway that was before the redress board, um, a charity looking after people with disability. And the abuse was absolutely horrific. And that's going back some time, Minister. And so I'm in a position today in a new life here in this stall and I'm saying, what have we learned as a government? And I welcome your strong statements. I welcome your speech. I welcome the strength with which you delivered it and that you won't let this happen again under your watch and you're going to take charge. But I've heard those speeches before. and I've heard them from different ministers. Um, and what will be different this time? Because it seems to me that at every stage no matter which government, we make decisions based on resources and that the vulnerable people suffer each time, not realising that we will use up scarce resources anyway in following up with um, commissions of inquiry and with reviews, with guard investigations and so on. And so it's something I have returned to many times in the chamber since I came here in the last four months, the theme of money and how we end up spending more money in the long term in any event. And so, Minister, with this new policy and new politics, I wonder, will you have an influence in pointing out that at the end of the day, we're actually saving money in the long term, not to mention value in people who have a disability and from whom we can learn on a daily basis, given their strength in surviving and surviving with disabilities that we know little about. But our role is to give them the chance to thrive and our role is to allocate funding. And so when we come back to the failure to register, the question has to be asked, and I think it was asked by Deputy from uh, Sinn Féin in relation to resources. Is the bottom line again that we're not allocating enough resources? at the end of the day. Is that the problem here? And if it is, let's have that out in the open and let's discuss that as intelligent beings who are here in this chamber to make decisions. Um, in relation to the UN Convention on Human Rights, again, we have dragged our heels on that year after, not the, not the UN, I beg your pardon, the, the, Coven, Coven, the Convention on Rights of People with Disabilities. We still haven't ratified it. We still haven't completed the process. I'm delighted that we've now given a commitment to do it before the end of the year. But again, that we have been forced to do that. But that has not been a proactive policy by any government. And we've been forced repeatedly prior to every election, local elections, general elections, to give a priority. And that pressure is coming from people who are really doing it on a voluntary basis. So to finish, I, I support the amendment. I have no difficulty with it. But I would like you to come back on the, on the um, more general... Uh, issues that I've raised. Got a meal of Margaret that I can call.